Hey everyone, our today's topic is non-finite. Remember, in verbs we have learned that there are two types of verb, finite and non-finite. So, don't worry, let's have a quick recap. Finite verbs are those which changes themselves whenever there is a change in the subject, basically the number of subject and gender of the subject along with the change in the tense. Whereas non-finite does not change its form whether there is a change in the subject or any tense. For example, he teaches mathematics and now I am changing the subject I teach mathematics or we teach mathematics, she teaches mathematics. So here you can see that the verb is changing from teach to teaches or teaches to teach. So therefore teach verb is a finite verb. Let's see that how the tense changes. Here I have transformed the sentence he teaches mathematics to he taught mathematics. So you can see that when there is a change in the tense the verb is also changing. Let's have one more example. He likes to teach maths or they like to teach maths. So here you can see that we have two verbs like and teach. In both the sentences the verb first which is like is changing therefore it is finite verb but you can see that the verb teach remains unchanged Therefore, it is the infinite verb. So, what we have understood that the verb which does not change is infinite or non-finite verbs. Are there any types of non-finites? Yes, there are. There are three different types of non-finites. The first is infinitive, then participle and the last is gerund. And in this session, we are going to understand infinitives which are to and the first form of verb. Let's see that how the sentences are made by using infinitives. Like you can read the sentence, it is easy to follow the rules. Now, to follow is the infinitive. So what we have understood so far, that non-finites are those verbs which don't change themselves by the change in anything. And under this, we are going to understand infinitive which is to plus first form of verb. Now let's see its usage. So the first use is as the infinitive form is used as a subject to verb. Subject to verb, what does that mean? The sentence is to rise early is a good habit or to err is human. Here the verbs are is so these are actually to rise and to err are serving as the subject to the verb. Secondly, we can use an infinitive as object to the transitive verbs. Now what are transitive verbs? These are those verbs which actually require an object to have a sense. For example, he wished to deceive me. Now he wished what? He wished to deceive and he hopes to pass the exam now he hopes that what did he hope to pass the exam with flying colors so here we have verbs wished and hopes and what is he wishing or what did he wish to deceive and what did he hope to pass so these infinitives act as an object to the verbs wish and hopes and these both are the transitive verbs because they need an object to have a complete sense and the third use is that they serve as an object to a preposition now let's look at the example the train is about to leave let's have one more example she stood up to ask a question here we have verbs is and stood and after that we have prepositions about and up so the train is about about what about to leave here we can see that to leave infinitive is serving as an object to a 
preposition and in the second sentence she stood up up to ask now again the object is to ask which is an infinitive and it is acting as an object to the preposition which is up the next use is to express any cause purpose or manner for example he went to buy sweets do not waste your time to convince her so we have these two sentences in these sentences the verbs are went and waste now here we are showing the reason that why he went so he went to buy and what he should not waste in to convince so these both are expressing a cause the another use is to qualify an adjective means to uh, to intensify an adjective like i am eager to join engineering and the second sentence is are you anxious to help him here we can see that i is the subject am is the verb eager is the adjective and eager eager to join then are is the verb you is the subject anxious is the adjective and anxious about anxious to help so these are qualifying the adjectives eager and anxious and the last use is to qualify a noun let's see how it qualifies a noun like this is not the time to sleep and the second sentence is the order to release the prisoner is given by the magistrate here we have the time and the order as nouns so the time to sleep and the order to release here we can see that to sleep and to release are the infinitives which are qualifying nouns time and order remember the sentences which we made in the starting which were starting with the infinitive like to rise early is a good habit or to tell a lie is a bad habit or bad thing so here you can see that the start the sentences which are starting with an infinitive are quite formal and looks awkward so we need to be a bit informal how we can transform these sentences so there is a format which is first we will write it then b adjective and then to infinitive now i hope you know the forms of b so let's transform the first sentence it is good to rise early and it is bad to tell a lie so here you can see that these sentences are much easier and commonly heard now if you want to give an emphasis for someone like it is good for him to rise early now you are just stating the general statement to someone particular so that is why we have used for and the name of the person or the pronoun for him or it is shame for ravi to tell a lie again we have just specified the statement for him and for ravi so you will use for to give any emphasis then we have some adjectives which express some moral or some intellectual expressions or qualities these adjectives are like courageous cruel wrong mean foolish etc now with these adjectives we don't use for if you want to make a sentence with these adjectives we are going to use the name of the person with the preposition of in the earlier case we have used the preposition for and now we will use of let's read the examples it is kind of you to help me or it is foolish of her to behave like this i hope this is clear to you 
Can we use this infinitive without to also? Yes, you can. Now let's see that what are the different cases where we use this infinitive verb without the preposition to. So the first thing is that after the verbs like bid, let, make, notice, hear, see, feel, watch and have. These are some verbs after which when we use the verb it is used without to. Like I made him sit down and I heard him cry. But here is one point you need to remember that whenever we are making these sentences in its passive form then we will use to. Like I made him sit down is changed to he was made to sit down and I heard him cry is changed to he was heard to cry. The second use is after the modal auxiliary verbs. So we don't use any infinitive or we can say with to after modal verbs. Like you can go now or he should be more serious. Now in these can and should are the auxiliary verbs and we have not used to. But in the case of the modal verb ought to, it is mandatory to use this to. Like he ought to finish it today. So here we will use to and then we will use the verbs first form. Then there are some modal auxiliary verbs like need to or dare to. When we make negative of these sentences, it is made in two ways. The first is he does not need to come and the another way is he need not come. Let's make the sentences with dare. He dare not do it or does he dare to do it? So these are the two different ways of making the sentences of need to and dare to. The next case is that whenever we are using the verbs do, does, did in auxiliary form then we don't use to plus verbs first form that means we don't use infinitive with the preposition to. For example, she does not study regularly or did you hear about it? Here you can see that does is the auxiliary verb not the main verb similarly did. So study and here are used the infinitive forms without to. And the last case is after had better, had rather and would rather. After these we don't use to plus verbs first form. For example, you had better stay at home or I would rather die than beg. Also after but, except and than we don't use to plus verbs first form. All these three have the same meaning of except. Like she did nothing but sleep whole day. I did everything except give him money. He did no more than make a formal request. Infinitives are further of two types, present and perfect. Let's see the formation of the verbs in these cases. In present, we use to and the first form of verb, whereas in perfect, we have have plus third form of verb. And the difference is that whenever we are using the present form, it does not show if the action is fulfilled or not. But in perfect, it is always the action is uncompleted or unfulfilled wish or desire or anything. For example, he expected to reach early. Now he expected, we don't know that it was completed or not. But you need not have gone there, means it was not necessary to go there, but you went there. So that means it is the unfulfilled wish. Now let's see the construction of these infinitives 
and the first is with the use of to and enough now they both are different why because to means excess excess of something whereas enough means that it is sufficient and to always points towards the negativity of a sentence whereas enough is the positive form of the sentence for example the soup is too hot to drink means it is that much hot that you cannot drink it and the second is he is tall enough to touch the ceiling means he is that much tall that he can touch the ceiling and not less than that the second construction is when we combine simple sentences and they express purpose of something or the action done for example the first sentence is he sent me to germany and the second sentence is he wanted me to learn german here we can combine the sentences and form he sent me to germany to learn german the third construction is conversion of a sentence of a complex sentence to a simpler one and it is actually a replacement of a clause by infinitive for example the complex sentence is i was sorry when i heard of your failure now we are going to convert this complex sentence into a simpler one by just replacing the clause when i heard with to hear and the sentence will be i was sorry to hear of your failure this was all about infinitives and in the next video we are going to understand the other two types of the non finites i hope you have understood everything and if you encounter any problem feel free to ask me till then take care bye bye and keep watching